There is nothing wrong with your television. We are controlling transmission. You are about to experience the awe and mystery which reaches from the inner mind to Brunswick Area Television. Hi, welcome to Golden Years. I'm Laurie Betts. This month I am interviewing Roberta and Meredith from Home Instead Senior Care. Come on back and we're going to hear all about what they have to offer. Thanks to your generosity, Marines have delivered Christmas to children in need since 1947. Golden Years, I am interviewing Roberta Woodard and Meredith Myers from Home Instead Senior Care located in Wadsworth, Ohio. And they have a wonderful organization that is for the seniors. You are like a second family to the seniors. We try, we try. And you have to have in your hearts the wanting and the giving to help these people who so well need you and your help right. and your caregivers. Yes. yes. So tell, tell my viewers a little bit about what you guys do. We go into the homes of seniors um, and we do anything we can as an extension of their family to help them stay safe and independent. And that can be anything, Lori, from um, meal preparation and helping with shopping, errands, light housekeeping, helping them go to the doctors, run, I said run their errands, um, anything really to help them stay safe and independent, help with physical therapy and occupational therapy, although we don't provide it, we can help ensure that they do those things and take their meds. Anything that helps sons and daughters and spouses be sons and daughters and spouses again. That's really what we like to tell people. And that is a true statement. It really is, it really is. Because in my world, when they come into GTB, I mean, the frustration sometimes is just so high. Yes. You know, they're like, we're, we're so worried about mom and dad, but yet we have to work, we have or I'm here for ourselves. a week. Right. Yes. Um, then they go back to their their cities, and then, like you said, they have kids for the, right. you know themselves that they're all active in sports, right. in homework, in work. You know, it gets it gets very frustrating. You could just see the frustration build. You can, you really can. So that's really the way we like to say it. We like to say we help sons and daughters be sons and daughters again. So, well, how do you help Mrs. Jones convince her to let someone come into her home? Because these people don't want people in their house, strangers in their house. True. Um, well. A lot of that starts with the way we train our caregivers. Um, without giving away trade secrets, because I'm sure lots of people watch your show, we really do train our caregivers on how to not feel like strangers from the minute they knock on the door. Um, and a lot of that is, is understanding that the person on the other side is nervous too. You know, That's they true. don't want a stranger in their door and the caregivers want to be liked. So it's really helping the caregivers learn to have that conversation comfortably and conversationally about you know, I'm not here to take over your life or to mm -hmm. make you do things you don't want to do. This is your home, and I'm going to I'm going to ask you to teach me how you like things to be done, and maybe along the way you can teach me something new. And really, particularly when you're dealing with a senior woman, that's what we do. We nurture by nature, so you tap into that, and it really does help the caregivers get the foot in the door. We can tell daughters and sons and husbands until the cows come home, we really know how to do this, but really it's until the caregiver's on the other side of the door when they really begin to trust us because she can get in the door, or he, we do have male caregivers, they do get in the door and they can access the home. So it's, it's, it's really, that's the fun part of the job, the challenge on how to problem solve. How do you help somebody when they don't truly understand that we're not looking to take over. We just want you to be safe and independent. So, and you get to stay in your home. Right. 
You know, you don't have to pack up and move. Nope. And, and nothing against assisted livings or anything. They're all beautiful places and they have beautiful um, caregivers in their facilities. We work in some of those facilities as an extension of the family. So yeah, we're not, we tell people all the time, we are not anti-facility. We believe wherever a senior calls home should be comfortable and safe. Exactly, exactly. So, um, and I love your commercial. Oh, thank you. I mean, that is just, it's a neat concept. It is. You know, that you can have someone there 24-7 mm -hmm. and you're in your home and they'll do your hair, yeah. they're, the, they're your hairdresser, they're your social outlet, they're mm -hmm. your whatever you need. And every client is different. So we have client care managers who work diligently at creating plans of care that fit each individual. So they all look very different. So. And I know it probably has to be <coughs> frustrating because you have to know the needs of the senior. And that's just a part of getting to know the senior yes. and the likes and the dislikes. Yes. Yeah. Our client care team will go in and do an assessment. Meredith and I can go in and do an assessment <laughs> if we have to. It is not our gift, um, mostly because Tammy and Amanda are really good at understanding what is safe and what isn't. We're okay at it, but it's not our everyday job. But we can all go in and do an assessment, make sure we understand what it is, take it back to the client care team if it's one of us doing it, to make sure that they write the plan of care that says, you know, whether they're ambulating, do they need to be helped all the time, or is it certain times of the day that they're a little more unsteady on their feet? Do they have special dietary needs? Do they have things that they like and they don't like? Um, they're as as medical, medically induced and necessary as you have to clean their CPAP and make sure that you take their blood sugar at certain times of the day to, you know what, she really doesn't like gun smoke, so don't put it on. Oh. Truly, that's how detailed our care plans are. So, and every client's different. Oh, everybody, everyone Every client's is different. different. Oh yeah, definitely. So. And when you go into the house, some days are gonna be happy and mm -hmm. some days are gonna be sad. Mm -hmm. I'm happy and sad some days. I, 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 I think that that's important to know and understand, but I also think that's under, under, it's important for us to understand as humans, that's okay when they age, but don't, and, and this we tell clients, families really more than our caregivers, it's okay. If they wanna talk about dying, let them. If they wanna talk about missing your dad, let them. If they wanna talk about the fact that I'm just mad because I can't get in my car and drive myself to Walmart anymore, yeah. that's okay too let them vent. It's not bad for them to be sad. Let their feelings be their feelings and then move on from them and then start after they've gone through the whole gamut of why they're upset. Then talk about the positives. This happened two weeks ago. I was in the grocery store of all places. I'm a long distance caregiver for my own mother. And she was telling me how awful her life is. And I'm like, well, mom, I could understand how you feel like that right now. You've, it's been a rough year. I absolutely understand that. And then I said, but let's not be melodramatic. We have lots of things to be happy for. And she's like, like what? And I literally ran through the list. She's still got siblings that are alive and she's got three children who are, two of whom are close to her now. I'm still the far away one, but there are lots of reasons to be happy. She has great friends and she's comfortable and mm -hmm. she's independent. She still lives alone at 80 years old, completely independently, like doesn't even have a cleaning lady. Will occasionally, occasionally let me wash a window, but not often. So. And she still drives? Oh yeah. Okay. She doesn't drive up here, but she drives all around her little town. She goes to the grocery store and she goes to get her hair done and she goes to the bank. And Necessities. She goes to the church, she goes to church. She works at church a lot, so oh yeah. Oh, yes, she does. And then she drives her little old lady friends out to lunch, which is just hysterical. Oh, there, she's active. So she's that's very, wonderful. very active yes. and social still, which is why I said, okay, now let's not be melodramatic. I know it's been a little rough this year, but lots of good things. And she did. She popped right out of it. She said, you're right. She said, I just get sad this time of year. It would have been their 58th anniversary a couple of weeks ago. So uh, dad passed away and she was feeling a little sad. So yeah. But and that's right. I we were mean, married to him for 50 years. Yeah. Lots of people don't make that mom. So really? Oh, sometimes definitely. you have to just let them go through their feelings and then say, now let's get back to reality mm -hmm. here. So. And to let her know that she's allowed to feel right. like that. Right. I absolutely that's... understand. It has been frustrating. It's been frustrating for all of us, but you're still healthy and fine today. Yeah. Oh yeah. You, you have your you're friends. Back. And you're back. I mean, you're mobile and out and about again. And we weren't sure that was going to happen six months ago. So. Sometimes it's really a matter of perspective. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. 
and they have to be open-minded. Yes. Like for you to talk to her and say, okay, mom, let's look at all the good things. Right. Some days that goes real, real well, and some days, I go, to the some days I go to the office and say to my friend Meredith, I really might might not survive my mother, <laughs> not, not one more week. I, I, I tease, my mom is a force of nature. She truly is. But that's why so, we understand right. family caregiving. We've all been family caregivers and understand the stresses and having children and, you know, juggling it all, and it's not easy. So we have a lot of um, understanding when it goes to just let them go through it, and then, okay, we're good, or this is what we can do to help, you know. Right. A lot of and we all go through it in one way right. or another. And sometimes I think the senior likes to hear you went through something right. like that. You know, let me share with you my part of my life. Right. You know, because they probably think you come in, the caregivers come in the house and they have a perfect life. Right. <laughs> you know, not knowing what really does go on behind the doors. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. It does. And, and I, Meredith's right. We've all been family caregivers. She took care of her dad. I took care of my dad. Now we're in a whole different point, but we both have kids and I'm hoping for grandkids one day and it's just, you get through and we understand that. And I think that helps us empathize with families. You know, when we're talking to the daughters particularly or the sons, like, yeah, we hear you. We, we know just what you mean because the minute we get off the phone, I've got a soccer game, so, you know. <laughs> and too, dealing with families, I'm sure, I know you probably have a one go-to person to deal with. Usually. But I'm sure you, you're involved in the, ugliness and the, the dynamics the dynamics the family dynamics yes. <laughs> yes we 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 don't judge we all have a past we all have a life and our goal is always to focus on what is good um you know the good outcome for the senior so um you know everybody has their situation and we yeah. just want to focus on what's important for the senior so we don't judge you know and you can because no. every family no two families are alike no yeah. no and when you're when especially when you're dealing with dynamics and it would be easy to judge we remind families because it's usually the families who are aware of the dynamics and they're trying to often warn us that you know, like you just don't know what you're like you know what we know we don't know what we're getting into and we don't know your family or your family history what we do know is the day we meet your mom or dad that's the day we meet them so we love them for here you know all of that other stuff we don't and we frankly don't need to know any of it it's none of our business our job is to take care of mom and dad like Meredith said best outcome for the senior possible and that's perfect and that's what we beat into ourselves I mean and again it's easy to say we do it every day some days we have to talk each other through but we don't judge are we judging you know it, we, we have to self-check but <laughs> we become involved in their lives and we do our best but yeah and I'm sure you're going to learn dealing with the senior. You're going to know the dynamics of the family yeah. before oh, yeah. it's presented yeah. to you. Yeah. Our caregivers are good at, um, you know, getting in and building that relationship. So they, you know, pass on certain things to the office. And we kind of are like, okay, remember, like, you don't know the past. So, you know, because, right. again, we're all focused on the best outcome for the senior. So mm -hmm. it's like. Just don't judge. <laughs> yep. So we do have to remind it, just pull yourself back is what we often have to say. Like, yes, you love them like they're your mother and you don't agree with certain things, but it really, you know, it's not your mom and you have to, you know, keep yourself in check. So we do have to remind them of that. Sometimes, but it's good because they come from a loving place. So. Right. That's very good. good. And you, like you said, your goal is the person you're taking care of. Right. Yeah. That's your goal. Right. You know, you don't care what Tommy and Susie and yep. Sally are doing. It's none of our business. Right. As long exactly. as they're not harming mom or dad, exactly, no problems. So, yep, exactly. Live your life. <laughs> okay, we need to take a quick break. Okay. So we are going to return, and we're going to hear more about the meals. Yay! <laughs> so we're going to take a quick break right now, and when we come back, we are going to hear about Home Instead's holiday meals. So come on back. Help the Marines make Christmas possible for less fortunate children. Donate a new toy to Toys for Tots. Here's Santa Claus. You're watching The Bat. Hi, I'm Ed Zachary with Medina County Veterans Service Office. And if you're a veteran and you're in a crisis or worse yet, contemplating suicide, I want you to pick up the phone and call the Veterans Crisis Line at 
273-8255. Do it now. Welcome back to Golden Years. I'm interviewing Roberta and Meredith from Homestead Senior Care. And I have a question on my mind. So if a family member, because a lot of times the family members do call you mm -hmm. first, correct? Yes. What signs should they be looking for when they kind of think mom and dad might be in trouble? In the home? In the home. In the home. Um, frequent falling, uh, medications missed, um, let's see, meals. And there's often, like mom will say, yes, I ate breakfast, but if you go the extra mile and look and see if there's a dirty dish or, you know, in the trash can to see if there's any trash and there's nothing, then, you know, they know how to answer the questions properly. It's mm -hmm. not necessarily that they're actually following through and doing that. So weight loss, hospitalizations repeated. Um, Expired food, clutter, you know, the pile clutter. of mail that they, because they're afraid every piece of paper might be important. So I don't know what is important, so I'm just going to save it all and it grows literally yeah. so yeah so there's a lot of signs it yeah. really again it depends on the house but um basic signs would be falling medications missed not eating poor nutrition yeah so. missed doctor's appointments they don't want you to know that they're slipping right you know and they do need help they've taken care of you your whole life they don't want to give up that job exactly oh yeah definitely, definitely. So that role reversal can be very difficult yes oh it can be yes it can sure. <laughs> Okay, so now I want to talk about the holiday meals. Yes. And Meredith, I know, because I used to be a big volunteer yes, with you, you were. guys. Um, and then my family life got into the way. <laughs> so um, I want you to share with us the story of how these meals got started. Okay. Well, about 18 years ago, um, we had some, you know, untimely deaths in our family around the holidays, November and December. So um, our owner, Pam, was driving down and she saw... Um, a homeless senior, you know, um, asking for donations for food or whatnot, and then it got her thinking the Office for Older Adults doesn't deliver meals on Thanksgiving or Christmas. So, um, a week before Christmas, or no, it was a week before Thanksgiving, she decided we're going to do this. So, we um, last minute pass out a flyers. We started that year with on Thanksgiving, we did 25 meals out of uh, our little kitchen in, in a house. We did a house that time. And then by uh, Christmas Eve, because we do do Christmas Eve, and, um, it grew to 75. And, um, and every year since then, it's been growing. So we turned, um, you know, our holidays, which were not necessarily fun because of what we had been going through with our own family, we turned it into something really positive. And I'm proud of us for doing that because mm -hmm. last year, um, we served 716 seniors through Thanksgiving and Christmas Eve. So, awesome. and we have, awesome. yes, it, it makes my heart. Um, no, it does. Um, but we also have wonderful volunteers in the community. So Brunswick Rotary, um, they volunteer, yeah, they come. We We've actually, it's kind of weird to watch their children grow. They've been oh, yeah. coming yeah. so you, long. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, They've been coming for so long and 18 years is a long time once yeah. you like think about oh, it because yeah. it's just like, oh, the holidays are coming, this is what we have to do. But, you know, when you see the kids and you see them bringing their friends and oh, it's yeah. like, it's great mm -hmm. just yeah. to, you know, have the community give back to the seniors who, you know, have built the community basically. Right. So. And for years, you didn't ask for a penny because no. I know a lot of the organizations yeah. through um, the Medina County Senior Net, we always said, what can we do? What can we do? And you're like, nothing, nothing. Yeah. Those days are gone. <laughs> <laughs> We, Seven, we grow every year, was a so lot of we're, yeah. we're hoping yeah, to hit 800 this, this year. Awesome. It's awesome. Fairly it certain would be, we will. It's, it's, I enjoy it. Um, yeah. It does. It, it's a lot of work, um, but we, like I said, the volunteers make it worth it. I think we have over 40 volunteers at least that come in and... Um, you know, Pat Carlson from Carlson. Oh, yeah. Always comes involved. in. He gives our prayer. Yeah, um, it so it's like, I, you know, we have a lot of people who return every year, and it's great to just, sometimes that's the only time I ever get to see them. So Right. right. And you, we're, we're not talking a meal that you take out of the freezer. You no. are talking a turkey meal. Turkey. Yeah, and stuffing. And yes. mashed potatoes. And mashed potatoes. And pumpkin pie for Christmas. Yes. I mean, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, and, yeah. Yeah, Christmas is usually cookies. And uh, one of the facilities in Medina makes those for us. You know, it's, it's become, it has become a labor of love. It's, Everyone's it's, getting it's involved. It's had to. Um, when you start making mashed potatoes for 325 people, number one, it's a lot of stirring, but number two, it's a lot of mash. I mean, that's a lot of mashed potatoes yes. to, to provide. So we have some great community partners. We do our best to say thank you publicly to everybody. Again, Brunswick Rotary. Oh, yeah. yeah. And Bill. Francis. 
right? Bill yeah. is in that kitchen. He's doing. He's yeah, um, Bill, beating the potatoes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, we we just our staff gives up the day. You know, we we most of us go and we do our meals in the morning, and then we go home and do it all over again for our families, which is fine we all eat very late but that's okay too it, it feels good our families help yes it, I mean do. it's become it, true really. labors of love yeah if if my family is traveling I know my husband will say it feels funny not being at work today right and he means my job you know <laughs> he's like like we should be helping with the meals and we're there on Christmas Eve as well so we do the same on Christmas Eve um, it's hard to ask people to give up their Christmas morning so we do deliver Christmas Eve meals for Christmas Day but we give them an, that cho at that point they get a choice of hammer turkey and the, the one that's usually, you know, thank you, but no gravy. So we, we do our best to accommodate their needs. And it's, it's, and I have to say, if you've not been, yeah. if you've not been, you need to come. It's just a party and it's children making place cards. And then as mm -hmm. Meredith said, they've grown up now and they're off in college. And they these still children come back. used to make the, pla <laughs> the little placemats for the meals because they love to do something for their, I mean, they deliver them and they meet the seniors and it helps the seniors not feel isolated and they get that very mm -hmm. important visit, which is the whole point of the of delivered meals right. programs, but it's uh, that wellness check, but it's also that intergenerational thing that's mm -hmm. just so magical. And I don't know if it's all around the world, but I certainly know it's here in the States. We Seniors love children. Oh, they do. And it's oh, so do. good to have that on a holiday. That can be a very sad day for somebody when it might be the only person they see for it exactly. to be somebody who's just willing to take a minute and say, here you are, we're thinking about you and we hope you're well, so. And you can't be in a hurry when you're delivering the nope. meals because I've delivered some of the meals and they just want to, and God bless them, they want to talk, mm -hmm. you know, so they want to know about you mm -hmm. because like you said, that's the only person they see on a holiday. Right. So, yes. I mean, it's just, for you guys to start this and to continue with it, I mean, I, kudos to you guys and thank you for doing such a great job. It really is what we love to do. It we love giving we love back to, to our community. We love giving back to our seniors. We love community involvement with children and it's, it's really a good thing to do and I, I'm happy for it. And the more the volunteers, the merrier because that means longer visits. So <laughs> longer visits for right. the seniors. So well, That's true. That's yeah. true. Um, and I know one couple, uh, Brunswick Rotary, um, the member and his father got involved mm -hmm. and and they've been doing it for years too for years, so like you said yeah. it's just a family thing yep it it's is. wonderful um and i know then at christmas too do you have the stockings last what? year we did bags we did that bags. the brunswick rotary right. um and then we asked um for donations um just to put it out in the community yeah. and brunswick rotary did get a lot of donations they, but it was really you know they're just right. kind of basic things um you know Things that we all probably take for granted, um, little things of toothpaste, um, so, toiletry items, yeah. you know, every little bit counts for, for seniors right. and, and it's something that they don't have to go and it's a gift. And, oh, um, sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. And, and we had some blankets left over and yeah. stuff, so it really, we had a lot to give and Brunswick Rotary did a lot to get donations Make sure we from. got it, yeah. Oh, that's from, wonderful. Yeah. And if any of my viewers want to get interested in volunteering, call your office. Chris. Yes. Okay. Do you like the number? Go ahead, shoot out the number. 330-334-4664. And you can give us a call. We already have our volunteer sheet already because yep, we do get started. calls. Yes, it is. Because you know you're with you in the morning and then you know you're going to go home right. and enjoy family right. dinner. Right. I had someone who um, recently just volunteered and with her two two children and she came um, when she got home, she said, I, my heart is breaking. You know, everybody takes their family for granted until you're alone. Oh, yeah. And then right. like kids grow up. And, you know, so she was teary eyed and she's come back every year since. So yeah. it may, it, you know, it warms our volunteers hearts too. So it's, it's a really good, it's really nice to get back to the community. Staff members that are no longer staff members who have gone on to other, other opportunities or who have just retired still come back. That's when you know that what you're doing is special. You know, it's, Definitely. it is a labor of love. So, yeah. And it was a unique volunteers. idea. And it's it's needed. It's yeah. so needed. Things yeah. that come up when you're driving. I, I <laughs> feel horrible because people ask, "What are we going to start doing this for Summit County?" And I'm thinking, "Oh my gosh, we uh, yeah, somebody I, we need. To, I'd be happy to share the model. Anybody else want to take it on? But really, yeah. yeah I know those wonderful volunteers that will help you. Right. Yes. But we oh. we have had people ask me a couple of different times, when are you going to start doing Summit County? I'm like, we can't be in two places at one time. And the, the church is generous, but the kitchen's not that big. Like, we're... Oh, it's not. No, it's not no, no, no. Yeah. We're... 
we figure it out. Yes, we manage. <laughs> we manage. And in Medina, you have all these little hidden streets and everything. Yeah. I mean, they really go deep into Medina to yeah. deliver these meals. Yes. That's where the challenge comes in because we get all the names and we ask for a deadline. But of course, I, I can't turn anybody down who wants to come to me at, oh, the day before Thanksgiving. It's I got food, um, you know. So I have to redo yeah. routes. Um, so we try and get our volunteers close to where they feel comfortable, um, and then we just. Map quest everything and give them around. So, like I said, it's, it's a couple of late nights, but it's totally worth it. Typically on Thanksgiving morning or Christmas Eve morning, we're bright eyed and bushy tailed because most of us haven't slept and we manage to pull through. We have coffee yeah. and we greet our volunteers, and they're just. Yeah. It's the day again. before Thanksgiving. Um, I cook 50 turkeys and then we slice them. So, yeah. That's my big job, <laughs> and then I bring and them routing. to the kitchen. Don't, that's not true, and she does all the routing, which I have to tell you, if you've oh, never tried to route 350 meals. In, close in the right. same area. Yeah, make oh, sure yeah. they're all together, and time-wise, and special needs, and do I have enough volunteers for that? It's a much bigger job than she lets on, and then she does it. We, then we use the warming ovens because they're fully cooked. We just have to get them back up to the appropriate temperature and keep them there for 20 minutes. So we literally bring them in fully cooked and sliced. divided and sliced, and then throw them into the warming oven while we're making everything else. And then we have a litany of people that work in an assembly line to package them all up and That's then awesome. it's, it's just it, my husband did it list somehow this year that they were having trouble with the foil pans and he came home with he couldn't help me in the <laughs> kitchen because both of his fingers were bloody from trying to crimp all of oh. those pans so i bought gloves this year to add to our oh thing. that's a good Simply idea because, yes good idea. yeah so that the, the volunteers who get that job don't have i mean they, they were bloody too that's why he took over and it's just the sheer number from where we were 15 years ago to today is so especially because you had said about the meals yeah so christmas this year is an interesting thing and it's probably something important for your viewers and anybody in the county to know that gets the del home delivered meals from the medina county office for older adults um, they have elected that Christmas Eve day is their one of their floating holidays. So the seniors that get the home delivered meals will now go because Christmas Eve is on Monday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday with no, no visit. And again, it's not so much the food, it's, it's the, the visit. visit. So they're, they're telling their, all of their people, be advised. So we'll take care of them. We will manage. We'll figure it out. So. Well, good. It excites me. It does. <laughs> really, really. Yeah. 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 It warms your heart. It's, yeah. Thank you for joining us this month on Golden Years. And if I miss you next month, happy holidays. Thanks to your generosity, Marines have delivered Christmas to children in need since 1947.